Hemminger, welcome to Cradle. Um, as you may have noticed last time we started videotaping, I want to thank uh, Larry and folks. This is part of both uh, open video and Google video projects that we're able to do this. Um, not yet, but soon we'll start having the videos of the Cradle Talks be available um, online and we'll link them in on the Cradle pages just like we do the slides and stuff afterwards. So if you can't attend in person, we get a lot of requests from people that want to see them, you can bring up the video. And this is the first time we've mic'd somebody, so I'm the guinea pig. And uh, Larry, you start waving madly at me if something's not working right. We're <laughs> also being broadcast the second life as a test. All right. So my first time on, actually, I think I looked at it once, my, maybe my first participatory time on Second Life. All right. The uh, talk for today is wikis in the classroom. And I'm pleased to see a number of faculty and actually got emails from about six faculty today or yesterday saying they wish they could come, but they couldn't. So I think they felt appropriately guilty that you know, I was trying to talk all them into coming and talking about how to use the wikis. Um, the reason that I'm giving this talk is purely because of my students last semester. Um, at the end of class, besides the usual course reviews, I talked to them and kind of asked them what things they liked and didn't like. And the one thing that in my database course that all the students said was that tell other people about using a wiki for their class. And we had a little bit of discussion, and what I want to do is turn that into a big discussion today. And I'll tell you a little bit of my experience, and I'll show you a little bit of Paul Jones. Um, a couple of his courses. The two of us, I know, have been using wikis. There may be other faculty here, other instructors here that are as well. And I encourage you to just participate with me today and, and tell me of your experiences and not just instructors. I encourage the students to do the same thing. So if you're in courses, especially if you're in Paul's course, I know I kind of corralled a couple of folks to come that I, I knew were in Paul's courses because I haven't been in those. I'm not sure how he's used the wiki in those to just talk during today's session. Um, so the uh, we don't have PowerPoint. We have hardly visible uh, text on the uh, on the wiki page. I'm not sure why it's black on white. Um, so I gave you the motivation. Um, this is the overview. And again, uh, you're welcome to interrupt me at any time and to share experiences, uh, ask questions. What I'm going to do is to just give you kind of a brief uh, introduction to the course that I used in last semester and um, bring up Paul's courses so you can get a sense of how they were used. Um, then I'm going to give a little bit of a five minute kind of tutorial about using them, all right, because I'm not sure everybody is that familiar with wikis and they're pretty easy to use and that's why I encourage you to bring your laptop or have it up. Um, this page, is that readable at all to you guys? It's a bio Ivy lab ilsunc.edu slash sandbox. It's a play area, sort of. And SAPRO, which is, I'm just reusing another old wiki, so it doesn't mean anything, S-A-P-R-O. Um, if you just do that, it'll get you actually to a place that you can uh, get on to, to this page. Yeah, so it's BioIV Lab. Dot, ILS, et cetera, and then it's uh, sandbox and S A P R O in caps. If you do that, it'll take you to the base page for this, and then off that page, there's one for this talk. So, um, so try that. If you still don't get on it in a minute or two, just raise your hand again, I'll help you. Um, so I'll introduce it a little bit. Uh, there's a how-to page on that, and then I set up a little sandbox within that page that you can play in and go ahead and make your own stuff. Um, then I'll kind of step back and talk about the purposes that uh, we might use the wikis for, and then do a little bit of comparison. Um, I've used MediaWiki, but that's because what I, I use that for a lot of research projects and actually set them up for other people's research projects. But that's a little bit higher, and that's what Wikipedia is based on, MediaWiki is. And there are other choices. And so the other two I've done are uh, PBWiki for like peanut butter, peanut butter and jelly, simple wiki. Um, and then the other one is Blackboard, which also now, as of this year, has a wiki as well. All right, so I want to go to courses. So if you go into that SAPRO page, this is what you should see. This is the sort of base page. Um, this is another uh, wiki page. 
So this is contrasting the three. And this is kind of what I was starting to tell you. So the media wiki is a little bit more heavy duty. It's made to hold media as well as sort of text. Um, we use that, but it requires running a, a database behind it. I use MySQL. You can use different ones. Um, and so that's a little bit more involved. If you wanted to do something simple yourself, you might not choose to do that. On the uh, opposite end of the spectrum is the PV Wiki, which is easy. It's just a hosted service on the web. So you just connect to a web page. You can just say create one under this name. It's kind of like a you know, Gmail account or something. So it's very easy to use. It doesn't require you to you know, have any resources. Um, it's fairly straightforward and has most of the same tools as the rest of them. And Blackboard, how many people here are instructors and use Blackboard? Let me just see, show of hands. Awesome. I'm not, so my hand is down. I'm not a Blackboard fan. Um, but they have recently, yes, it was. I sort of set you up on that. Um, so uh, Blackboard, um, although I don't use it, I went in and used it one of my courses for last year and set up a wiki under that just to try to test it and be fair because I used it. I might not be as experienced, and so some of those of you that have used it might know more about that. Um, but it also supports that. So if you're already using Blackboard and want to just extend your usage of that to use a wiki, you can do that as well. All right. Um, so let's jump to some examples. Um, I'm going to contrast two main examples, one of Paul's courses and one of my courses. Um, Paul used the, the wiki for the entire course, so all of his content and stuff was on the wiki. Um, I didn't do that. I made a slightly different choice. Um, so I'm going to go to, this is my database one course. So I have two main pages that I just put on the web. They're HTML basically. One is the sort of the syllabus home page, which is this page, which has general information. And then the uh, schedule page, which has all the schedules and all that kind of stuff. Okay, So pretty similar to what most folks do. The thing that I did different was to um, have what I call resources page and then a class work area page. Okay, um, And the two things that I felt beforehand, just kind of guessing that I might want to have the wiki for, would be to have something for long-term kind of accumulation of resources. So this one will stay um, across courses. So what happens is I identify things that I think are of interest or relevant to the course, and I start just putting them in there and populating them. But I want the students to do that too. So students that do that this year add stuff in, and it carries over. So we keep accumulating stuff or editing it, so it becomes our sort of memory for the, for the course. So I think that's one nice use of the, uh, the wiki. Okay. The second one was to do a class work area. And this was based on a, uh, a long-standing desire I had to have the ability to have students sort of teach during the class. So in a lot of my courses, um, we work a number of small exercises, and we want to share our results or kind of talk about what we're doing. And I do sort of technical stuff like the database course. They might want to run something like a SQL query and something like that and show the results. Um, I can't easily do that. Um, we did 2.14. Those of you who use that room, we actually put in two plugs so you can connect two different uh, laptops as well as the main ones. We have the possibility of having three people present. I used that the first time I taught there. But this is nice because what we do is we set up a, uh, a wiki page. And then this was a group exercise where there's di different people in different groups. And so this student and this student put in their actual answers. Okay, And so they can do these live during class. Um, a lot of mine, we, we start them kind of at the end of class. They work in between classes. And then we come back and talk about them at the beginning of the next class. All right, So they can put their work up and show it live interaction or uh, saved and accumulate. And I like this especially for the exercises because they can present and show their stuff. But also then, again, you build up this body of knowledge. So if we had 20 students all do the same exercise, you can see 20 different ways of doing it. And in SQL, there's a lot of ways to write a query. So you get a lot of experience, not just my way. I usually show them one or two ways, but now they see a whole you know, wide range of choices. Cal. So how do you address incorrect answers? Uh, so I won't necessarily go through everybody. So there might be some that we don't talk about. 
Um, usually what I do for like the exercise like this is I'll ask them to present at the beginning of next class and then I'll review them before the start of class and then I'll pick out ones that I think maybe show nice ways of doing it, different ways of doing it than I thought of, ones that weren't the way I would have done it and why I would have done it differently. So I'll talk about this, but I may not see all of them. So just because they're up there doesn't mean they're all correct. Um, so sometimes we might edit them. Most of the time we don't in the, in the wiki, at least the last time you could do that. All right, so those were the, I use that mainly for sort of the exercises, not for the formal, more rigorously graded assignments, okay? In part just because of the, um, wanting them to do their work for that part. This is more shared type of work. This is uh, Paul's wiki. This is the uh, capstone course for the undergraduate, 697, I think, is that right? Or is that the, it's hard to tell when it's so big. Yeah. So his, he went whole hog. So he has the entire course up there now, okay? So I had some hesitations about that because um, I haven't really started talking about it because I probably should introduce a little more. So what is a com collaborative, communicative effort? Anybody can write the pages. We can control who we allow access to and have maybe a set group of users. Um, but for most of these, it's the class or perhaps anybody that might come in and edit these pages. And so if you put up all the content, um, maybe somebody goes and wipes it out, you can restore back to an earlier version so you can put it back up, but that might be a little bit of work for you to do that. So I, I chose to keep my um, schedule and sort of the base syllabus thing fixed and locked. So I just created those pages, they were separate. Everything else I kind of made more editable. Um, but uh, Paul went right out there and did it, did it all the way. Um, so he has what we would normally have in our different set of pages and stuff all on his, his wiki page. Okay, so what he's doing, expectations, his schedule, links to other materials. Okay, so this is try to get you an idea of what you might do. So you might extend out just from the instructor saying all those things to let other people link in stuff at these points, right? I read this great thing that was about that too. Can I put a link in there? Sure. That's what, what a wiki is all about. <coughs> all right. And I think he had his 490, but this one he doesn't have as much material in. So he has links out to stuff like a blog and other things like that in the readings. So just a couple different versions. So let me stop because this is supposed to be some participation. Who else, any other instructors have used a wiki as part of their class? And what have you guys done? So go ahead. John. So yeah, in uh, spring of 2005, I used MediaWiki for my like, health sciences information class, the reference course for health okay. sciences information. And, um, Pretty much, I'm doing similar things to what uh, Brad showed you. Uh, I did a little bit more content out there, so I had the schedule and grading and all that stuff, but I had those individual pages locked down, so I could edit those. Um, so basically, the functions that I, that I had set up were for students to be able to edit the schedule for their presentations, so when they had um, the weekly presentations and then group projects they could perform groups and schedule themselves and they were, you know, negotiate those times on their own. I wouldn't have to do that as an instructor. Um, but also they had weekly assignments like um, Gary Marchanini has a one minute paper concept that's only maybe familiar with when you as a student do you write a sentence or two about in each individual class and so they were able to post those and, and uh, see each other's comments and comment on those and so there's some interaction there as well. So, um, you know, activities like that where there's some interaction where it's useful to be able to see the students uh, work or participation. Um, Brad showed the SQL queries, so my sort of analog to that was the PubMed Medline queries that they were doing for assignments. They all posted those so they can compare uh, how, they, how they address that individual problem. Center, did you have a? Yeah, I've been using two of my courses, both my courses this term. I have a different motivation for using it. I'm using it because I'm preparing people to be in school and public librarians, and they're going to be working with young adults and kids, and they're the ones who are out there experimenting with all these things, so I want them 
to have that experience of using the wig and understanding the you know, how simplistic it is. And I just use peanut butter wig because it's great. And so for the one course, the young adult literature course, I'm having them develop a pathfinder and I'm having to develop it in the wig. Um, so again, when they go out into the real world, they'll do that with kids and kids can interact and, and add resources to it and so forth. And then in the um, other course, the curriculum issues, whatever that course is called. I'm using it um, a couple different ways. Each week, a different person is assigned to add to the wiki their reflections and sort of a class summary of what's going on, and so they can add to it, and then the other students hopefully will begin to, you know, interject. So somebody's assigned to that every week. And I also have reason for current events or current issues, so if people find, um, you know, issues in education or issues in the library world that come up, we're posting them in there, and again, people are, you know, commenting on what each other's finding, and then we just kind of have a place to show and tell, um, where there's just interesting things that aren't really necessarily, um, curricular related, like somebody wrote a poem last week about, um, information in earth space, and such the effect the person posted her poem to, um, to the, to the way. So, I don't use it during class when I have this discussion because right. I feel like I watch the students and I feel like if the person who's posting to the wiki, that person becomes more than just the scrum, they just become the, the brain for the group. And I like still using the post-it notes and having the, everything up and then having somebody do it later so that everybody can see what's up there um, and can say, no, I don't agree with that. Whereas if you're sitting here with the computer, I just feel like that person kind of takes over and becomes for the group, but I, I don't like that too. Right. But in the new building, maybe we have lots of ways to protect these things so that you could still use it. It would be up there, and you wouldn't have to, have to do it after class, but I'm still struggling with, with that. All right. So I've, I've kind of noted a lot of good comments. I, I love the uh, the show-and-tell comment because it's a, it's a space that you can kind of share stuff and you can show off a little bit. And I you know, encourage your students to get excited about stuff and be able to share back to the class. So kind of like the resources I page I had was a little bit more long-term, kind of hidden away. It's nice to bring it right into the course, maybe like Paul's wiki where he had all the stuff out and maybe anybody could add things in or you have a space that's kind of show and tell or you know, add to the discussion, which I think is great. Um, I mentioned how I chose to put the syllabus and the schedule sort of on a separate page because I want to sort of control that. And John told you about another good alternative. You can lock pages in the wiki so that they aren't editable by other people or by other groups. So you can do the same thing, same function, but keep it all within the wiki if you want. Um, I think, and, and some of the last comment is good too about how you do the dynamics. For me, the course that I used it for is sort of technical and we want to run SQL queries so it's nice to be able to enter the query and then cut and paste and, and actually run it on the computer. Not all courses are like that, probably the minority, right? So if we're having an open discussion or thoughts, a lot of times it's nice to have them not center on the computer or to write on the board or on post-its and things like that. So it seems pretty straightforward for things that are exercises where you probably have a certain time that you're going in and looking mm -hmm. at submissions, but right. how do you deal with just the workflow of, I mean, you know, any part of any page within your course site could potentially be edited by a student at any given time. Like, you know, how often do you monitor that? What do you do about, you know, right. sort of staying on top of what changes might have been made if somebody adds a resource? I don't know about the one you use, but in peanut butter wiki, I get an email. Right, so you can so see. Yeah. You know, as they're starting to put their pathfinders in, as they add their page, then I get an email, and so I can go on if I want to. I don't have to, but I can go on and look and see what they've done, and then I can kind of, you know, give them some direction. I really like that because then right. I can give them feedback all along the process, whereas before, at the end, I, you know, they give me the final pathfinder, now I can actually see it as we go along. All right. Are you the only one that gets email or the students also? I mean, I, you can I, I, I set it up. Yeah. Right. That's why you can usually set that both ways, yeah. right. Email. And then so yeah. that's also an important part of it is, is openness about how <coughs> channels right. are set up. I guess, I mean, my question was actually to follow on to that because I was aware that you could get that notification. How do you actually, as an instructor, deal with that? Or do you kind of try to set aside certain times? Or maybe there aren't enough comments coming through that it's really relevant, but... Um, I, I usually look at stuff, well, I teach like that course twice a week, and so I usually prepare that morning. So I'll usually look at stuff a couple hours before, and I have time to then react to or look at what's been updated and stuff. That's just how I've done it. Um, and I tend to lock down some pages so I don't expect changes there. What I expect is for them to have worked in the exercises or maybe in the show and tell. So, you know, so far, I, I just that's part of my planning is I have an hour or two before, then I, I can use that to review the, this stuff as well as kind of prepare the lesson. 
right. Well, yeah. Right. Right. So that's a great point too, and to, to highlight that one as well. So I, I told the students at the end of the course that was actually a hidden intention of mine was that they would learn another tool, and um, and this time I didn't even tell them they start you know, teaching it this semester. The first time in that class we do an exercise on the wiki, and by the end of the first class they're all using it proficiently. So to me, that's pretty exciting that it's easy enough to do, that our students are quite capable of doing that. And by the end of the course, they felt very comfortable doing this. So they had acquired a skill, not part of the course per se, maybe, but they had a new skill that's pretty relevant in today's world. Um, all right, so let me, uh, let me go back to our outline. OK, so I want to talk about um, wikis just in a, a little bit. I'm going to go to our uh, sandbox area. Well, actually, let me just. So if you're online on any of these, you have to log in. Um, and if you don't have one, you can make one and just create an account. And all it's doing is asking you to, uh, to identify yourself, which is useful in terms of uh, spam and stuff like that, which we'll talk about later. <laughs> So I'm seeing the same thing, except the Edit tab is now enabled. And so if I wanted to look at this one, this is what it looks like in MediaWiki. So it's not truly a what you see, what you get. It's got the text there, and the markup is similar to an HTML with a couple of sort of short, this is to do the sort of the bold section header. Um, this is bold the text. This is a, a link to a page. The double brackets is a link to the page. And this is specific to MediaWiki. There's different. Wikis, obviously. Okay, I'm going to go back. Now, if you're on our page and you want to play, you can go to the uh, the sandbox page, okay, and put things in. You know. you know, put your name in. Feel important. Um, and then you save the page. So what it consists of is you edit. That takes you to the actual sort of the source text. Um, then you save it out, and then it becomes live. So it's as easy as that to make changes. So I actually encourage you guys, please uh, put things in during the talk if you want. Um, and if you go to the history, you can see the. Well, yeah, that's my question, too, because the history is where you can see people making changes and additions. But mm -hmm. my you know, with, in Paul's class, in the, the 490 class, I would put my, he didn't lock down any pages, so if there was an event that was happening, I would put it into the schedule, um, right. which was also my class readings, and Paul would do the same thing, but I just thought that there was, so how, how can I create a protocol amongst the class or amongst, say, a committee wiki, other than the history that denotes when somebody went in, added something, put their name on it, you know, or made a, ver a new version of a document we're working on, other than relying on people to go to the history and be able to connect the dots and figure it out. Well, sometimes the email, like we're talking about, to notify people of a change. Um, so I think it really depends a lot on the circumstances. I mean, like with classes, you have a sort of a regular meeting time, and so you look at it before then, or you can go back and check. Um, we often sometimes, for my research ones, we'll still use email to say, you know, I finally finished putting in the changes, now it's time to go look at this thing. Um, so I don't know if there's a set way necessarily, and it's not just within the wiki, it's also within email and stuff. Um, this is just a history, you can tell I'm the person <laughs> that's putting all this. Uh, see, Carolyn put a question in, thank you. You're all right. Um, I, I'll credit Paul Jones with this. A lot of his talks now, when he goes to give a talk, he doesn't fix his talk beforehand. What he does is he says, here's the things I can talk about related to this topic. You tell me what you'd like to focus on. And so he puts up a talk page in a, in a wiki and says what he likes to talk about. And you can go ask questions or discussion points before that. Um, I tried to do this. Um, not this last ACES, but the one before. If you remember, I, I have run the wiki. We started that two years ago for the ACES conference. And in that first time we did it, I, we set up a wiki page for each uh, talk or session, things like that. We tried to encourage people to do that. And we had a t grand total of seven, I think, out of the you know many tens of 
uh, events or sessions and stuff like that, where people actually putting stuff beforehand. So some folks did, but it wasn't that successful. Actually, most people put things in with the authors that wanted to you know, expound on what they're going to talk about even more. Um, but this gives you a chance to guide you know, maybe what the discussion is going to be about, whether it's a, a talk somewhere or the class that's coming up. And so you guys are welcome to uh, put things in. These are s s things that I had sort of stubbed in, and then um, Blicky's was what you had put in. Yeah. Um, so let me stop for a sec. So two things. One, more, more comments maybe from Paul's classes. I've told you a little bit about my class, but comments or thoughts from using the Wiki in Paul's class? Well, it was good. Well, uh, how many people have taken a class with Paul? Paul likes to, uh, Paul likes, uh, he, he has a very detailed reading list, which is a great reading list, but then while he's talking, he also likes to throw out 40 other reading suggestions. What's great with the Wiki is, as he's saying them, I get to throw them up. So that way, you know, instead of the first couple of classes, it was people trying to recall what he had said, and that way we could actually log it as it was happening and put it underneath an appropriate section within within the wiki. One of our assignments was a class blog, so the wiki just allowed us an easy place for everyone to log in their own personal blog and for us to, to link out from the wiki to that. Um, we also had we also had class related news, which, you know, Paul Paul put content in to get to get the wiki going, but then after that, you know, a class session where we talked about social networks for animals, who's really the user, is it the animal or the person, ha ha. That enabled me to put up like 14 different animal related sort of, you know, user created, generated content of social networks for cats. Um, so I mean, it just it just served as a, it, it was a very nice exchange where we could put up, put up information, as I was saying to Brad with the schedule. The Duke Center for Humanities had some events that were very, uh, we're very specific with what we were doing in class, so we're able to throw those events into our schedule for people to see. As I said again, with including readings, um, making up new headings, we gave class presentations, and I don't think I'm stretching to say that I was probably the biggest user of the wiki. Jeez, the the contributor. I think if you look, it would be like, yeah, Song Pon and, and I were the contributors on the wiki. So we had um, class presentations to give, and guess what? The person who uh, you knows who uses the wiki the most is the one who gets the first choice because I went in there and, and started the trend of how we were picking dates. I put it in the schedule and other people then followed. Um, and it was funny because uh, where you were saying you're teaching students a new tool, right. we did have somebody in the class who and he, he used the wiki for, for reading the schedule and doing that and posting his and putting his stuff up on it, but instead of him putting it, he would ask me if I would do it. He'd first ask if he, I could tell him how to do it, and I'd give him the code and tell him how to get into the page and do it, and then he would come back and say it didn't work and could I do it for him. So it was sort of funny that I enabled somebody to avoid the simple technology. So, so one thing I would say is not simple <laughs> if people can't just do it themselves really easily, right? So there's a little bit of barrier on some of these wikis about how easy they are to use. And I would encourage you, when you're thinking about which ones to use, to evaluate that as one of the prime considerations. Because if only one person, Carol and I, you're sort of the wiki person for the uh, digital repositories, and I am for the Scholarly Communications Committee. And we put all the content in, and people ask us to put it in for them, because they're not as experienced at that. Okay. We like ones for our classes, I think, that are so easy that not just the students, but also us instructors feel comfortable doing these right. So it seems like, from a security standpoint and from that standpoint, it'd be better to set up their accounts before the class starts for each of the people that are in the room. Uh, we did this for the social software right. symposium, set it up for everybody, and gave them a, just a very short, simple three-letter password just to keep out, you know, random people. Uh, and it worked fine, and then nobody else could register for it, and since then in a class setting, you know, you know who's in the room anyway. Right. So we, we'll come back. It's a good question, I think. There's a couple options on that. You can set up sort of a, a wiki-wide pass, you know, login password that's the same, so everybody just uses that to get in. The disadvantage of that is that you can't distinguish people when they make the edits then. So if you want to know who did this and who did that, you can't tell. Um, we actually did that for the ACES conference. I looked at loading in all the membership numbers and preloading everybody so they wouldn't have to do it. And so we actually developed a batch routine to do that. So you could use that for classes. Um, Blackboard has the advantage of using your onion to authenticate you, so it already does that part of the process for you in a sense. But the other ones, you have to, you have to deal with it a little bit. Uh, additionally, with 
open ID happening now. There's a way where you can transfer and just use a different set of credentials right. somewhere else. Right. And so right. does Carolina ever set one of those up where you you know you could maybe somehow hook it into the onion? Right. So one passport from that system. Right. They're already authenticated, and they just they can come, they can edit, but other people can come. And they right. Can so this might be jumping ahead because I think I saw it on the sort of general outline of questions of, you know, what, does this mean I can stop using Blackboard? <laughs> um, <laughs> I know, I mean, from my experience, I think this is true with a number of instructors. One of the main reasons that Blackboard gets used is because it's sort of making the fair use case for sharing a bunch of things that right. are copyrighted, right? Right. And in my experience, uploading things to a wiki is a big nuisance and you have to deal about, like, people logging in to get access to things. I mean, what... What's your view on how to deal with the sharing all of these part of a class if you're doing a wiki? Would you actually right. upload them all individually into the wiki, or would you have a separate space where all the readings are? Um, I usually try to use all open stuff and just link to it. Um, if it's not, then I would put it either into the wiki, or sometimes I'll have like a, a web URL area where I have all the stuff and just link to that. Like if there's like 40 things I've already compiled and put in this one space, I might just link to that so I don't have to link each of them. Most of the wikis are not that bad to upload stuff. I mean, you can just cut and paste the URL in, or you can browse to it, or things like that. Can you yeah. password protect a section of the wiki? Yes. So again, it depends on the wikis and stuff. So like I was coming in response to John's earlier, so you could lock down your main pages, for instance, or you could lock down some of those resource pages where you've got things that are you know, copyright, not public domain, um, versus the ones that are. Um, I sort of simplify because I try not to use anything that's actually not public uh, and keep my course entirely public as much as possible. Um, it's easier for me because of the, the, con well, but the content I have is a lot of it's technical and database related and the, the book and stuff and exercises already are available to us. So it hasn't been as much of an issue for me, but that's a very special case, I think, compared to most of our courses. Um, I want to show you, I showed you a little bit of MediaWiki. Let me show you a little bit of these two, and then I want to leave lots of time for discussion. Um, so Blackboard, I'm going to connect to, um, I won't go through all the stuff that's in here, I'll, I'll mention a couple things about these and you guys can go back and look in more detail. What I try to do is to make a pass through and just kind of write down my, a little bit of stream of consciousness, but sort of my pros and cons um, about what uh, Blackboard does and how it compares to the other ones. Um, it's, uh, it's pretty good, um, it has some limitations. Uh, in about how you create the pages and how you manage them. In my mind, it's not conceptually as clean as some of the others. Um, it's trying to kind of like do the work for you, but to me it becomes more confusing. Um, one of the issues that you run into sometimes like when you do our exercises is uh, people are at the same time creating resources, maybe with the same name, and it's like a file locking problem. And how do you handle that? And some wikis do a better job of that. So if um, Cal is editing this main page and I go in to edit it, how do they handle that? Okay, Blackboard uh, makes another version, it clones another version of that, and names it something a little bit different at the end, um, and kind of keeps track of it itself, but doesn't actually display that back to you. So it's sort of confusing to me how it manages it. Um, PBWiki, what it does is it blocks you. It lets one person have it, and then nobody else can touch it, and it gives you like a five-minute span. Um, so if, you, if you're not touching it, you still have it for five minutes. And, MediaWiki, what it does is it allows more people to do it, and if you make your edits and then I come back and I make my edits and you've already locked, you've already written yours in, then it tells me that somebody else has updated the page. It shows me the new update and what my changes are and allows me to then put mine into the new one. So it tries to help you do that. But there's no perfect, you know, there's different choices on that solution. So let me go into Blackboard. That means I'm going to have to uh, log in. So. Don't look at my password. I don't even remember what my password is. <laughs> okay, so if you're in Blackboard, you go to Tools, and then you go to Teams site. So Teams is their way of saying this is our shared collaborative space, and that takes you to the Wiki homepage. Okay, so what I did to test um, was to take um, a little fake content and try to stick it in each of the three systems and then see how it worked. Uh, what I wanted to do is to be able to link to resources outside of like UNC, stuff inside of UNC, um, link to pages within the wiki itself, um, stick in an image and stuff like that. Um, and I used the, uh, the syllabus and the uh, schedule from my 
earlier course that I showed you. And the nice thing about Blackboard, actually one of the really nice things, is that you can just go to that web page and basically grab the web page, not the source board, just grab the web page, and stuff it in here, and it automatically figures it out and puts it in for you. So all I did was take the other page I had and just stuff it in here, essentially, and it becomes a new page. And the nice thing is it, it looks perfect. All right, So I had to do very little work to convert an existing page to bring it up under Blackboard. So that was a nice thing. Um, the, uh, the problems that we want me to show you exercises first, because Ellen's going to knock us out. Um, so I put in some exercises, kind of like I showed you in my course. So um, here's a person putting in their stuff and linking out. And what most of these do is they try to keep their same frame. They bring up the new pages that you want within that frame. And generally, if it handles that well, you can then go back to where you were. And these are people that didn't do as much work. And John just linked to her. So this is just to test a link back within the system. Okay. And Sue did that. All right, so this was linking an image file just to do something different. Now the trouble, the biggest trouble I had with, with uh, Blackboard was that um, you don't have an easy, you can look at the page history to try to see stuff. You don't have an easy listing of pages in the way it was naming pages. And if you go to certain links, um, it'll take you all the way out and you can't go back. You see, I tried to go back, and then it wouldn't. So once you sort of go out of Blackboard, or I'm not sure, I haven't figured out how it defines the difference, you can't go back in, which is really frustrating. All right, so there may be some way around that. But uh, it seems to have handled some things OK, but not so others. And this is a fairly new addition to Blackboard, so maybe this is something that they'll resolve. Um, so let's go back. Um, the PB Wiki, I'm going to just show you. I've got my stuff in here, and one of my students, I asked him to do it, and he has some more detail. Now, you notice how it's slow coming up? That's probably the biggest disadvantage, I think, so far. Is, and have you, did you notice this using it? Um, certain times it's a little faster than others. Sometimes it's not quite so fast. Um, so it's free, and it's kind of like using a Hotmail or something like that a few years ago. It's not always the fastest thing in the world. Um, they provide you some templates already. So they, they have an aim to help folks with classrooms. So that's kind of nice. This was actually a, a different course design. So if you read this carefully, it was a course on corporate taxation before I reconfigured it. Um, I put the same stuff in. And it does a pretty good job. Some of the big differences here, you notice that it really wants you to actually pay for a service. Um, and so you, you get uh, little ads or come-ons all the time to encourage you to upgrade to their paid service or to see their ads instead. And so that's a little bit distracting. Um, but for the most part, it's reasonably um, easy to use. You can see all the pages. And again, this part drives me crazy because I'm I do user interface design. I think those things always go like that, and so because it's sort of slow, I, it's a bit frustrating. Um, so you can see the uh, the regular pages. These are the ones that I've created, and then most of these have things like uh, looking at recent activity, recent changes, and stuff like that. Okay. All right. So not that much different. Um, this one allows me to go out to that resources page. Notice how it keeps it within their wiki. And I can go back. So it was more successful at that kind of operation. Um, and it does a pretty good job of uh, going back and forth within itself and out to other places. So the, uh, the issues with this one are more about someone else hosting your content, I think. So this raises questions about, uh, you know, what if they get bought out or they change next year? Who, you know, is that content gone? Is there an easy way for me to kind of export that out or control that? So I probably have more security with Blackboard at our system, maybe if I manage it myself. Um, this one I could also dump in. So I created the same um, courses. I didn't show you that, but I put in the syllabus and the schedule. Um, I can grab the raw HTML and stick it in, and then it works fine. 
So that's an important thing. I think if you want to convert a course you already have, you don't want to go recreate all that stuff. So both of the systems work pretty well for doing that. I could uh, take existing content I had on web pages and just stick it into the wiki and it would actually look pretty good or look the same. All right, I want to stop talking and um, kind of open it up to you guys. There's more detail on comparing those and I can talk about that. Um, but I'd like to let you guys kind of lead the discussion a little bit. Um, so with that, I'm going to open the floor up. Brian. For the pages that you don't want changed, right. is there any added value to dumping them into the wiki as opposed to throwing them up on the internet or as a generic web page? Um, I don't see much difference. I mean, since you can link to stuff, um, you could just keep it somewhere else. Like, so if I was, if I chose to go the PB Wiki route, I might tend to keep some of my stuff that was already maybe on web pages, things like that, just there, because um, I wouldn't necessarily see an advantage to putting it there because I could link out to it very easily if it was already a web page. I mean, the main advantage would be to put content actually there in the pages. So, like, if I want an image like Build a Cat and stick it into there so I don't have to go somewhere else, that might be helpful. Um, but since, I mean, for most of us, a link is the same as it's being there, right? You can, you can link right to it. It comes up right away. It's very little difference. Um, does that answer your question? Yeah. So, I mean, so what you see is the primary benefit of this is conversation where you yeah, I think changing and th adding their own content. Right. A, sh a shared space, both in the short term, like I was talking about for, you know, maybe during class, but a lot of it in preparation, sharing kind of through classes or adding comments in, and then also accumulating them over time. Um, so, you know, this is my kind of first pass at maybe how you might do it. So it's this so, sort of more slower accrual of knowledge, um, the sharing of class and group assignments, and then doing stuff in class and being able to let other people drive, you know, what's being presented. Uh, those are those for me were sort of the three big ones. But I, I want to really hear what. That's just my limited imagination. You guys probably have other ideas how you might use it as well. I just think it can also be a way for students to work collaboratively. Right. Together. Yeah, I don't think I highlighted that, but that's a, that was a great point you made earlier. I do my group projects that way now because you can sort of turn it over to them more and just say, you guys, we have, I divide them up into groups and say, you know, here's what you're going to do. And they do it all in the wiki now because it's a convenient place to do it. So one of the other questions I raise is what technologies does this displace? Okay, so if I want to do paper and pencil or email or we're IM each other, what things can it replace? And I tend to feel like we do most of the stuff on the wiki now because that's where we add other things that we want to talk about or either show and tell kind of stuff. It's where we do all of our ex exercises and related materials where we add the things in. It's where the group assignments are done. That's where they communicate, add their material, decide who's doing what, and it's documented there. So then I can see it. And I love the fact that, you know, peer pressure works really well. So if you're going to all put it up in a public space and you know all the rest of the class is looking at it or will look at it, you do a better job, right? Um, so it's a, it's a good point. I just know there's a doctoral student at um, U of T, UNT, UNT, North Texas. And they actually did, they had that online doctoral program. They actually worked together and created like a textbook. Right. You know, all just through the wiki, and so right. you could use it for really you know, complicated kind of so Objects. outside the scope of this talk, but there are wiki books and there are people that now collaborate writing on the wikis is another use for them. Can you have small group wikis that don't allow other people in? Sure. You can. Yeah. So you can, you can have a membership only. Yep. Wiki. Yeah. And, and so again, those are the things where you have to do a little bit more work sort of administratively. It depends on the wiki. So actually Blackboard has that concept and, can, and you can do that. Um, it takes a little bit more work for the instructor to set some of those things up. Um, and then it just depends on which wiki you're using as to kind of how much control that you have and who does that. Usually it's the, if you're setting it up, usually the administrator has to then do that. Um, and so you could maybe set up that as it occurs or maybe set up some default groups beforehand, just tell them to use those or something like that. You know, you can make group one, just have a password for it, just tell that, you know, when they decide to use it, just tell them that password and they all use it or something like that. So that's, that's what you can do with the group pages on Blackboard. And I'm right. And whether the wiki would actually be a better interface for that kind of right. local experience right. where you want groups doing 
perhaps the same thing, but individually. Right. As groups. I think that's. So this works. I think that's a blackboard scene too, because they're. I'm not a blackboard user, but the way they define it is within their same groups definition kind of stuff. So I think they're trying to provide those as like two alternatives to do the same kind of thing. And you can sort out which one works better. Yeah, and once it's hooked into the onion, it would be a lot easier to manage. You could have right. your list from other places. That right. Have right. Another hosted site called stickypad.com. Uh, S-T-I-K-I. Mm -hmm. It's pretty clean. And they've got a free version that does pretty much everything that PD Wiki does, but they've also got uh, monthly and yearly subscriptions for 10, 20, 40 bucks, stuff like that. And it's really, really clean. Sticky pad? Uh, I, I, K, I. Uh, no C. thousand different wikis um, and there's a there's a number of tools and I'll, I'll add some to this talks uh, wiki there's like a wiki matrix that looks like different wikis and the functions that they do to help you kind of choose between them um, if you were going to do this the reason I chose these intentionally P wiki and blackboards I think those are probably good choices and when we talked I recommended the, the PD wiki and stuff like that because it's very simple it's easy to use no resources are required and Blackboard because it's already here most of you are using that um, but there are a lot of other choices um, and if you're already doing something like I am then maybe the media wiki uh, so it is kind of hard to choose on some of these perhaps but uh, there you can always if there's something that's not quite meeting your needs you can look and see there's other wikis that usually do that and um, one of the things that some of them do better than others is what you see what you get sort of editing and actually, the, I didn't show you that, but like the PB Wiki does a little bit better job of that than the, than the Media Wiki that I showed you, which you had more of a markup language. So some of them actually give you more of a what you see, what you get kind of direct interface, which is nice. And I suspect that's where they'll all go. They're just, that's a little bit high end for what most of them started as. They're more basic text. But I think pretty soon in the next few years, most of them will all provide that. So it'll be much, much even easier to do. You'll just actually edit the text right there as opposed to edit and save. I can't believe you guys don't have more pressing questions or comments. Or, uh... um, I'm thinking about <coughs> editing uh, law school, and I've had trouble. I'm, str I'm struggling with the idea of having being forced to learn in public, uh -huh. um, and in the sense that these pages are right. not being locked down. Right. Uh, so you have the option of that if you want to, it's just your class membership. Right. Um, you know, you've got students and they didn't learn. They just don't go back and change it because they moved on. And this stuff gets archived and it's not public. So I, I think it's a good I think it's a great question. So you notice I've already been bad about that. I showed you SQL from statements, and I didn't actually ask those guys that I that I, I know them. I think they're probably okay with that. But right. so so like so that page actually taken kind of put offline, so it's not visible, but it's still there because I want those students to be able to come back to it if they want. So kind of continued learning type of thing. Um, the resources page stays up forever, ever, and anybody can see it. But I think it's a great point. Now, if you're in Blackboard then it's privileged and so that probably is already taken care of. If you're managing yourself, that's an issue, right? Um, and I think the open question is good too. I mean, I like, I told you, I like that we can all see each other's stuff. I like sort of the peer pressure puts on you, but maybe not everybody's comfortable with that, even during the course, let alone after the course. And so students that have been in these, you know, raise your hand or think about that. Is that a good thing or not? If like all the things you just think about, if you're sitting here and everything that Jimmy's typing, we can all see right this instant, you might be embarrassed, right? Well, as long as that's also corporate issues, the legal issues, yeah. the university that students are more publicly available. Right. And, and Google finds it and keeps it forever. 
Right. Or two years, whichever comes first. <laughs> right. So like ours, I actually, we don't, I tell Google and engines not to crawl ours, so ours aren't seen, but um, you, you can, that they don't, and that's they, right. They politely oblige, but <laughs> others don't. Right. So. Right. I saw a hand up somewhere, yeah, Jeff. Well, it wasn't me, but I'll ask that question. Um, one of the reasons I use Blackboard, like you suggested, is that it's easy to make the fair use case because everything that's there is right. only for the class. The other reason I use Blackboard, though, is that it is a central place for everything. The problem that I have with this is that it's one more platform that students have to use. I mean, how do, I don't know how students submit their assignments to you, perhaps by email, perhaps you have your course syllabus up on your website. You're forcing your students to go to multiple locations to do all of the course right. functions. And I wanted to ask you if you had any feedback from your students about whether they prefer that, whether they find it inconvenient. Right. Um, I didn't ask him that specifically. I, so you saw what I did. I have basically the two web pages and then the, the wiki pages. So they just go to those. They don't go into Blackboard. They, I, I guess a couple of them did say they didn't like, or they liked not having to use Blackboard. Um, I guess maybe just because it was more open. But I think your initial point is really good. Is certainly we want to minimize the places they have to go. So if they're having to connect to Blackboard and somewhere else. So if you're already using Blackboard, then a good argument for maybe using the wiki within Blackboard is just a, an extension to that. If you did that and you set up something else outside of that, that gets to be a bit cumbersome, especially if it has the problems like I showed you where you jump out and it doesn't come back in. That would be really painful for your students, for kind of bouncing back and forth and getting locked out when they tried to come back in. Um, so I didn't hear, I mean, I heard some positive comments because they, they I guess, like being just on the open web and basically just have they see the syllabus at first, but mostly they're just on the schedule page, and that's where I link in all the resources and the talks and the readings and things like that. So there's one page pretty much that they're on, and the wiki's off of that, so it's kind of like one space for them. What about the rest of the courses or people that are? I guess, I think, again, it depends on your motivation for using them. Mm -hmm. You know, I want them to experience it because that's what they're going to do when they go out as kids, but that's what teenagers are doing, so I want them to experience it. Right. That so yeah, it's been like motivation for different. Right. Just an instructional tool is also a tool that. Right. Yeah, I had to look at more, but I'll come to that. Yeah. yeah, I would add to that that I mean I think that we either increasingly being used in the professional setting, and so at least even if you're not going to drive your class with it, exposing students to using it and and learning through that or participating in it will prepare them for that committee that in the library or in the corporation that uses it and they've already had, you know know how this sort of thing works. Right. So I think that that's an important experience. I'm not a hundred percent sure I would do it to my entire classes. Yeah, exactly. What about those of you that have courses that are sort of the opposite of mine, sort of you know less technical, more open discussion, maybe like children's literature or something like that? Would there be applications for those? Do you think for for wikis? Uh, well, certainly, so children's literature. I can see the storytelling class. I'm struggling with it. Um, I, don't, I don't think I don't see the same kinds of affordances that this would work in the storytelling class. Maybe that's just because I haven't given it enough thought, and I'm happy with the way I teach storytelling and it works. Um, how much of that is electronic already? Very little. Yeah. Yeah. That, that's the job. Yeah. Right. Right. Translation, I was just right. Right. No, I, I can see, certainly I could replace discussions. But I use discussion groups occasionally on Blackboard, and those I find very uh, productive and fertile. Um, those could be turned into a week pretty easily, I would think. Um, just to lock down to specific groups, the things that I do in group pages could easily be ported over. Right. Right. Um, so I, I see it mainly as a conversational tool and, a, as you say, sort of a resource building tool right. uh, where you get the students adding, adding their own content and building a list of their geographies. It makes a lot more sense where you have a shared resource where people are making revisions to a document in the sense of list of resources or something. No. It's not so clear to me that if you have that sort of thread discussion that you'd have in Blackboard or any other system, that it's necessarily the edit this page model is a better... I mean, it's really easy to look and see this person posted this, this person responded. But, I mean, it's structured in a sort of threaded, iterative kind of way, whereas right. 
you have to do a little more unpacking if you just see one big wiki page to say, now, whose comment was that and what did they say next? Right? It doesn't seem like for a directly developing conversation as opposed to a developing document. Right. Right. I think for me, I, would, I agree because I, I can't stand that I have to click on all those links to see the conversation. I'd like to see it all in a chunk. And their convention is that they put their name after their comments? Yeah, I, I, would, okay. I don't use it for discussion, but if I were okay. to use it that way. Right, or you can, yeah, some or you can see. Right. 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 And you can, you can just click on it and see who it was. I mean, I would be real interested to see how this, we don't have much experience yet, I think, as far as discussion or open discussion. It's like I used a listserv to communicate a lot of stuff and some of the group stuff, and I don't use that. We hardly use a listserv at all now. We mostly do it all on the wiki. Um, but for some of these things, I'm not, you know, I'm not sure that it replaces it well. Well, I was just going to say from sort of the perspective of the student in the class I'm in right now, they're using Blackboard, and I wish we had had a wiki because they're not actually using Blackboard. They've only posted the, right, the sure. syllabus on it and then you can get to the class email. Well, if there's just an event I want to tell the class about like today's session on wikis, I've got to go in and send an email out to everybody. I don't like getting that many emails, so I wish I had the wiki to actually post things. Or if I were able to go in and create discussion threads, I would also do that and use Blackboard for that, but I'm not, I don't have permissions as the student. Yeah. Larry. I have a comment from a Croatian uh, PhD student, uh, second wife, and uh, she makes a comment that Croatia are using wikis uh, as part of CMS, and uh, they're right. using it to um, help with their examination system, and that uh, students use it more for reading as opposed to actually posting things with a wiki. We're using a Moodle right now. We're using a Moodle with Glassbound. Yeah, using a Moodle with and I dislike yeah. it so much. I've just been complaining about it. So, you know, it was already too much of a struggle to have to learn how to use Blackboard. And then we've got Blackboard. I can't play Blackboard. Great. We've got MediaWiki. I know how to use MediaWiki. And now we've been exposed to this Moodle. And it's so as a user design, give them the hammer that hits the nail. Simply into a purpose. Don't give them the tank, right? Um, I want to wrap this up by answering all of our questions. Can I do away with web pages? Use a wiki, sure, but maybe not for all of you. How hard was it to set up a wiki, PB wiki, Sandra? How long did it take you to set up your PB wiki? Ten minutes. It took me took me two and a half. I when I and I hadn't done it before. I should say it took me about two and a half to set it up, and it took me about twenty minutes to put in all my material for my course and make it look like the course I had before. Um, what happens if um, it gets deleted by a student? You can go back and pull that back up. You have complete history of all the stuff that's there, so you can always restore it. But it might be a little bit of work for you to do. Do I have to worry about spam? Yes. Um, I'll stay after and tell a story about how I promoted pornography at SILS. Those of you that haven't heard that story off of one of our wikis, wikis can get spammed. And so if you're running it yourself like MediaWiki, that can be an issue. Um, that's a fun story, but I'll save that for later. Um, as a student, how does it actually benefit you? The biggest reason I've heard from several folks is it's teaching you a tool that's really useful these days. Um, in addition to, I think, making the course work a little bit better. And for me, it helps them get a chance to present, which is a good skill as well. Um, I'm going to skip. How easy can I uh, recreate existing pages? I knew when I talked about that. It's pretty easy in all those examples. And Blickies, blog uh, wikis. Um, I'm not using them. Yeah, well, and one for our Digital Curation Institutional Repository Committee, but uh, but yeah, I couldn't I couldn't find one I I liked or that anybody was experienced with them. Because right. that I think is the problem now is I'm using Delicious, the Wiki, and a blog. You know, right. and I wanted to compact them into one. Right. So w while it's good to use all the tools, I guess I would remind folks. Yeah, I think it's good to have one place for your students yeah. to go to make it easy for them. So this is a continuing discussion, I hope, and I thank everybody for coming today and uh, participating, and maybe in a year or two we'll have it again and uh, talk about new stuff. So thank, thank you. you Brett. Yeah. Thank you, Brett.